Unit 7 Mysteries Pupils Book, page 112 Activity 1 Can you identify these unsolved mysteries? Choose the name of the mystery from the box. Then listen carefully to check. 1. A prosperous city can't just disappear, can it? Plato, the Greek philosopher, wrote a detailed description of this island paradise called Atlantis. Today, there's no sign of it. Some say it was swallowed up by the sea, the result of an earthquake or a flood. What do you think? Did the island city Plato wrote about ever exist? 2. Most drawings don't have to be looked at from 305 metres above. But that's the only way you can see these 1,000-year-old geoglyphs called Nazca Lines in Peru. Scientists don't know who made these enormous drawings of animals, plants and humans, or why. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? 3. Here in this region of the Atlantic Ocean, called the Bermuda Triangle, compasses won't help you with directions. Ships and planes simply disappear here. What's causing this to happen? Is it pirates, methane gas in the water, human error, or something else? No one knows. It's puzzling and a little scary. Pupils Book, page 113. Activity 2. Look at the photos. What's the mystery all about? Read and match the mysteries to the descriptions. Then listen to check. 1. Good evening and welcome to Unsolved Mysteries Hour. This is Stan the Mystery Man coming to you live from Birmingham. Let's take our first caller, Harry. Harry from Leeds, you're on the air. What's your question? Yeah, hi Stan. My name's Harry. I've got a couple of questions about the crop circles in southern England. What are they? And does anyone know how they were made and who made them? Crop circles are perfect geometrical patterns that appear in crops of corn and other grain fields. They're best seen from high up, like from a plane. No one understands this phenomenon. There are some theories, but there are no scientific explanations. Maybe they're made by a cosmic force, or by the wind. Or maybe crop circles are a hoax, and some very clever people are trying to trick us. There are no real answers yet. Good questions, Harry. Now, Chris from Southampton, you're on the air. What's your question? Thanks for taking my call, Stan. I've got two questions. I was just wondering about the Bermuda Triangle. It's still an unsolved mystery, isn't it? And why don't ships and planes just stay away from the area? You're right. This is still an unsolved mystery. No one can explain why ships and planes sometimes disappear there. The thing is, no one knows when or if a disappearance will occur, so that's why ships and planes still travel there. 3. Now, for our next caller. Ellie from Bristol, you're on the air. Hi Stan. No one has discovered who built the Great Pyramids and why they were built, have they? It's amazing how well constructed they are. That's very true, Ellie. Scientists, like archaeologists and geologists, have got ideas about how they were built, but they're not really sure. To them, it seems almost impossible that the ancient Egyptians could have constructed these pyramids without modern tools. It's a real mystery. 4. Now, for a caller from Norwich. Go ahead with your question, caller. Hi there. 
I'm Abby and I'm a first year student here at the University of East Anglia. I agree with you about the Great Pyramids, by the way. We've been studying them in my Ancient Civilizations class. My question is about the Northern Lights. Are scientists confident they've now got a good explanation for this phenomenon? Very good question, Abby. The Northern Lights have been observed since ancient times. The scientists of long ago weren't sure what caused the brilliant colours, but the scientists of today have now got a pretty clear idea, and they've been able to gather proof to support their theory. You should listen to this programme next Wednesday night, because we'll be talking all about the Northern Lights. That's all for tonight. Activity book, page 93. Activity 2. Complete the dialogues. Then listen and check your answers. Have you ever heard of the Northern Lights? Yes, I think so. They're those bright colourful lights in the night sky. They're caused by light reflecting off the ice caps in the Arctic. No, that was just a theory. Now there's scientific proof. Gases in the air cause these nighttime fireworks. The Great Pyramids in Egypt are incredible, aren't they? They certainly are. Has anyone got an explanation of how they were built? Well, some scientists have got theories about it, but the mystery is still unsolved. Pupils book, pages 114 and 115. Activity 4. Listen and read. Where did the dry lake bed get its name from? A mystery? Not anymore. The Sailing Stones, Death Valley, California. Imagine this. Rocks of different sizes, some weighing more than 300 kilos, sit on a dried up flat lake bed that goes on for kilometres and kilometres. You would think that these rocks, especially the heaviest and biggest ones, would just sit in one spot forever, wouldn't you? Not the ones in Death Valley, California, in the USA. You can see them on the enormous expanse of dry lake bed called Racetrack Playa, which is named after these racing stones. Much to everyone's surprise, many of them, including the really big and heavy ones, have actually moved hundreds of metres from their original locations. But, of course, this happened when no one was looking. Not only did the rocks and stones move far, some seemed to have stopped and changed direction. A few even turned around and moved back to their original locations. Rocks moving on their own isn't possible, is it? As you read this, you're probably thinking of all kinds of weird explanations. Before blaming this on extraterrestrial beings, read on. In the 1970s, some long-term studies of the phenomenon were carried out. Scientists now believe this. Every year, the dry lake bed gets flooded with melted snow from the surrounding mountains. The water softens the soil in the old lake bed, turning it into slippery mud. Although no one has actually seen the rocks move, the best guess is that wind then moves the rocks across the slippery surface of the lake bed. Sounds like a logical explanation, doesn't it? Indeed it is. But without anyone actually witnessing the phenomenon, doubters remain. Sebastian, Spain. Rocks that move? Pretty cool. Emily, Australia. You don't really buy this whole story about stones moving, do you? Don't believe everything you read on the internet. Liam, USA. Well, this story just happens to be true. I'm from California, and the sailing stones have been studied since the 1940s. Even physicists have offered various theories. It's certainly not a hoax. 
Georgina, UK. Wow, you're actually serious about these stones, aren't you? Do you guys believe that wind can actually make rocks move? Come on. Detlef, Germany. I'm not totally convinced. There's got to be another explanation. Like pranksters, maybe. Hiroto, Japan. I'm a geologist, and rocks are my life. Believe me, Emily, these rocks really move. When the water level in the playa rises, the soil turns to mud and becomes slippery, and strong winds cause the rocks to slide. Moderate winds can keep the rocks moving. Liam, USA. Told you it's not a hoax. You're convinced now, aren't you? Activity book, page 94. Activity 4. Listen and read, then answer the questions. The Voynich Manuscript The Voynich Manuscript, written in the 15th century in Western Europe, is beautiful to look at. The pages of this book are full of colourful, lovely drawings of plants and astronomical objects like suns and moons. The handwriting that surrounds the drawings appears to describe herbal remedies from plants. You can imagine that the author was a doctor or a scientist. But if you look more closely, you'll notice two very strange things. The words aren't in any known language and the plants don't exist. That's incredible, isn't it? Scientists have studied the Voynich manuscript for years and have tried to understand the meaning of the words and the strange drawings. The words do follow some rules of a language, or even two languages, but scientists still cannot work out what the language is. And they don't know where the author learnt about the strange plants. An early theory was that the writer used an artificial language, Another theory was that the whole thing was a hoax. But why would someone spend so much time on a manuscript and work so hard if it was just a prank? Today, a group of scientists around the world are working together to create a machine that will help them finally crack the code. What do you think? Will a computer be able to help them understand the information that the 15th century writer so beautifully and carefully put into this manuscript? This is fascinating. What theories have scientists got about the plants? Could the plants be extinct species? They're amazing! I agree with Savvy Sam. The plants are amazing. I wonder if the plants look different, because they're ancient. Plants could change over time, couldn't they? I hope scientists crack the code soon. Maybe the manuscript contains the cure for today's diseases. You never know. Pupils Book, page 116. Activity 6. Listen and read. What's the big mystery? Hey Kyle, have you heard about cryptos? Um, I think so. You haven't got a clue, have you? Yeah, I have. It's a video game, isn't it? Nope, not even close. It's a sculpture. A sculpture of what? Let me see if I can find a picture. Yep, here's one. Mmm, it's just letters of the alphabet. So, why would anyone have a sculpture like that? The letters are really four encrypted messages. You need to work out the code to read the secret messages. But nobody can read the messages, can they? Of course not. I think the idea is to challenge code breakers. You're probably right. Has anyone decoded them yet? Yes, three have been decoded. But the fourth one is still a mystery. Pupils Book, page 116, Activity 8. 
Listen and match. Then choose the correct ending to the question. 1. Mum, do you believe aliens exist? I've got no idea, Theo. Me neither. There are a lot of mysterious phenomena in the world, but usually there are scientific explanations for them, aren't there? I completely agree with you, but, you know, I saw something just the other day. A mystery about some ancient rocks. Oh, you mean the one about the stone spheres in Costa Rica? Yes, that's the one, Theo. But I can't remember... Now, where did I see that? You probably saw it in my textbook. We're reading about them in social science this week. The mystery is that no one knows how they got to be so perfectly round. They are huge. Only a machine could do that. They say that ancient people made them, but ancient people didn't have machines back then, did they? No, that's true. They didn't. Mm, I'm just looking them up now. Oh, no one knows how those stones got so round. Wow. Have a look. They're really interesting, aren't they? Two. Oh, wow. These are so amazing. What are you watching? Some videos on YouTube. Come and see. Oh, yeah. I've seen those. They're called the Northern Lights, aren't they? Yep. Their other name is Aurora Borealis. We're studying them in science and English this week. You know what's also cool? What? Hang on a minute while I find it on my phone. Oh, here, listen. It's music inspired by the Northern Lights. Listen to it while you're looking at those pictures. Wow, you're right. This is really cool. The lights seem more beautiful when you look at them while listening to music, don't they? They really do. Three. I got you hooked on Kryptos, didn't I? You definitely did. I found lots of cool stuff about Kryptos. Did you know the creator of the codes has released more clues recently? Really? What are the new clues? He released six letters out of the 97 in that last phrase. I bet the decoders got very excited, didn't they? They did, yes. On the sculpture, the letters are N, Y, P, V, T, T. When decoded, the letters read Berlin. I can't imagine being a code breaker. I wouldn't be able to sleep because I'd be thinking about it all the time. That's exactly what's happening. Many people are obsessed with cracking the code and that's all they think of and do every day. That's insane. Four. What's that? It's a comic book. I know it's a comic book. Duh. I mean that picture. It looks like a city, but it's under the sea, isn't it? Yeah, well, they say it used to be a city. Don't you know the story of Atlantis? I don't think so. If it used to be a city, why would it be under the sea? Well, if it ever existed, according to this story, an earthquake destroyed it. No way! An earthquake can't bury a whole city under the sea. Well, maybe there was also a tsunami. An earthquake and a tsunami. Like in Japan. Exactly. Scary. I know. Activity book, page 95. Activity 5. Listen and read. Then circle T for true and F for false. I got you hooked on Kryptos, didn't I? You really did. I found lots of cool stuff about Kryptos online. Did you know that the creator of the codes has given more clues recently? Seriously? What are the clues? He gave six letters out of the 97 in the last phrase. I bet the decoders got excited, didn't they? Absolutely. On the sculpture, the letters are N, Y, P, V, T, T. When decoded, the letters read Berlin. 
I can't imagine being a codebreaker. Can you? I wouldn't be able to sleep because I'd be thinking about it all the time. That's exactly what's happening. Lots of people are obsessed with cracking the code, and that's all they can think about every day. That's ridiculous. Activity book, page 95. Activity 7. Complete the dialogues with the expressions in 6. Then listen and check. 1. Jennifer's always reading. I know. She's hooked on historical mysteries. She reads all day, every day. Really? That's ridiculous. 2. There's a craft fair on Saturday. Let's go. They've always got such cool stuff, haven't they? Absolutely. I could buy everything. Brilliant idea. Pupils book, page 118. Activity 13. Listen and read. Check your answers in 12. The Aurora Borealis. Albert Einstein whose work we still study today, once said this about nature. What I see in nature is a magnificent structure that we can comprehend only very imperfectly and that must fill a thinking person with a feeling of humility. We could surely say this while looking at the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis, also called the Northern Lights, is a magnificent display of swirling coloured lights that's visible in northern countries. Each year, people travel closer to the North Pole to see it and enjoy its beauty. Each year, people even travel closer to the North Pole to see it and enjoy its beauty. While modern films are full of special effects, this is a natural effect that's truly amazing. What causes this strange phenomenon? For a long time, no one could answer this question. People thought it was just a mysterious natural event, or even the spirits of animals they had hunted. Recently, however, science has provided an explanation. The lights are caused by the interaction of solar winds with oxygen and nitrogen in the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The solar winds, which come from the Sun, are attracted to the Earth's poles, the Arctic and the Antarctic, which is why auroras are easier to see at these places. The different colours of an aurora mean that solar winds are interacting with different gases at different altitudes. Oxygen produces yellow-green and red colours, and nitrogen produces violets and blues. The northern lights are easiest to see in the Arctic from autumn to early spring. This is the time of year when nights are long and dark, and the colours really stand out. However, during strong solar storms, you can sometimes see the Aurora Borealis as far south as Texas. At the South Pole, a similar phenomenon occurs at the same time as the one in the North. This is called the Aurora Australis, or Southern Lights. Scientists have also observed Aurora displays on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Mars. Scientists have discovered a lot about the Aurora Borealis, but some things are still a mystery. For example, people have said that a clapping sound comes at the same time as the light display. Whatever the explanation, the Aurora's magical and mysterious beauty has inspired and continues to inspire painters, poets and songwriters. Activity book, page 98. Activity 12. Listen and read. Then complete the diagram with the words in the box. What causes the Aurora Borealis? 
The aurora borealis, or northern lights, whose colors light up the night sky, is one of the most beautiful phenomena on Earth. It's also one of the most mystifying, since the display of shimmering colors, lines, and shapes is different every time it appears. In the past, there were various theories explaining the appearance of this beautiful swirling display. For example, long ago in Finland, people thought the lights came from a mystical fox flashing its tail in the sky. The Algonquin tribe in Canada thought that the lights came from the god that created them. They believed that after the god finished, he went up north to live. The god showed his love for his people by making large, spectacular fires that they could see and enjoy. Over the years, different myths have been told to explain this extraordinary phenomenon that may be best seen during the winter months in the Arctic. The aurora borealis continues to inspire writers, artists, and musicians today. However, in 2008, scientists developed a theory that everyone could agree on. The spectacular lights were caused by the solar wind blowing around ions, atoms, gases, and other things in the atmosphere and making them collide. When they collide, they produce the colorful displays of light. So, how does it actually happen? The exact process is complicated, but perhaps this simple diagram can help. The hot solar winds from the sun are blowing oxygen and nitrogen atoms around. There are two kinds of nitrogen atoms, the neutral and the ionic. The atoms are full of energy. When they collide, they give off colors. Oxygen produces a yellow-green to brownish-red color. The neutral nitrogen atoms produce purple and red colors. The ionic nitrogen atoms produce blue colors. This is a simple explanation of how the aurora borealis is formed. It's good to understand the science behind the phenomenon, but the myths are fun to know too, aren't they? Pupil's Book, page 120. Activity 17. Listen and read. What time are Joe and Susie going to get up tomorrow? Where are they going to have breakfast? I woke up really late this morning. So did I. I didn't wake up until 11 and I still feel half asleep. I'm going to try and get up earlier tomorrow. OK. So am I. I don't want to sleep all morning again. Neither do I. I know. Let's get up at 8 and go to the pool until 10. Yeah, for a two-hour swim. We could have a picnic in the park after that. Wow, a picnic breakfast? I haven't done that before. Neither have I, but it's good to try new things, isn't it? I suppose so, but, you know... Last time I got up early, I was tired and bad-tempered all day. So was I. Let's get up at 9.30. Pupil's Book, pages 122 and 123. Activity 26. Listen and read. Choose the best answer. Mysterious Findings there are stories of strange discoveries, unexplained artefacts, and mysterious sightings from all over the world. These phenomena become part of a country's culture. Studying them is popular with curious people and with scientists who want to find explanations. However, some things, such as how people build the pyramids, or what happens in the Bermuda Triangle simply can't be explained. Here are two interesting examples from Costa Rica and Tibet. Stone Spheres Take a look at this photograph. 
These stones don't look natural, do they? In 1930, while clearing an area of the Costa Rican jungle, workers came upon a number of these balls, which are estimated to date back to 600 BC. Since then, several hundred have been discovered and they're all perfectly constructed. They vary in size from the size of tennis balls to spheres that are 2.4 meters in diameter and weigh 16 tons. Studies have shown that the balls are made of granodiorite, a rock which is easy to break when its temperature changes rapidly from hot to cold. Researchers believe that ancient civilizations made the balls using hot coals and cold water. First, they broke the rock so that the balls were almost spherical. Then, they used ancient tools to make the rock smooth. However, even with today's technology, getting the stones this perfect would be extremely difficult. The mystery remains. Who made the stones and why? And how did they give them such a perfect shape? The Yeti You've heard of the Yeti, haven't you? So have I. But like most people, I wonder if it's real or just a legend. People believe that the Yeti, also called the Abominable Snowman, resembles a gorilla. Many believe that the Yeti lives in the Himalayan regions of Tibet and Nepal, which is where the legend began. But people also talk about a Yeti-like creature in Canada and Alaska, where he's called Sasquatch. Over the years, scientists and explorers have tried to find evidence for the existence of the Yeti. So far, only footprints have been found. There's no proof that a Yeti or any other creature made them, and photographs are never clear. Many scientists think that they were probably made by bears. So why do people continue to believe the Yeti exists? Maybe because there's no proof that it doesn't exist. And because people like mysteries. Activity book, page 102. Activity 22. Listen and read. What colour is a yeti's fur? Huge, hairy, ape-like creatures. Real or hoax? All around the world, there are stories of strange sightings, amazing phenomena and incredible artefacts. There are myths and legends to explain them, and some have inspired writers, poets and artists. Researchers have tried to find scientific evidence to explain these mysteries in an attempt to discover whether they're real or just a hoax. The Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman, Bigfoot or Sasquatch, is one such example. Huge, hairy, ape-like creatures have been the stars of at least ten Hollywood films over the years. In some films, the creature is friendly and huggable, like a teddy bear. In other films, it's a terrifying beast that wants to destroy everyone and everything. In real life, this creature has got several names, depending on which region of the world it's seen in. In the United States and Canada, the creature is called Bigfoot or Sasquatch. In the Himalayan regions of Asia, it's called the Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman. The colour of the fur may be different. The Yeti has usually got white fur, and Bigfoot has got dark brown or black fur. But they both appear to be up to 2.7 metres tall, and weigh from 300 to 400 kilos. Their feet can be as large as 43 centimetres long. But are these creatures real? For years, scientists have thought that these creatures were a hoax. But to this day, people continue to claim that they've seen them. 
In 2012, there were many sightings in the United States. One person posted his video on YouTube, and the video was seen more than two million times. A theory of some scientists is that the creature is a Gigantopithecus, a giant ape-like species that scientists thought was extinct. There hasn't been any proof for this theory, but the mystery may soon be solved. Scientists think they've got some DNA samples from sightings. If the tests are positive, then the mystery creatures will finally become part of the amazing, fascinating world of science. If they're negative, these creatures will continue to be part of myths and legends. Whatever the result, it seems clear that these creatures will continue to appear in real-life sightings, in stories, and in films. Why? Because we love mystery and fantasy, and we love to be surprised, at times even frightened, by the world around us. Pupils Book, page 126, Activity 34 Listen, read, and repeat. 1. Un 2. Inter 3. Re 4. Pre 5. Super Pupils Book, page 126. Activity 35. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. Un <sighs> A <sighs> E Unhappy 2. Inter N A Sh A N A U International 3. Re S I K U Recycle 4. Pre U Z D Pre used 5. Super M A N Superman 6. Re D U S Reduce Pupils Book, page 126 Activity 36 Listen and chant Celebrate International Earth Day Recycle your Superman T-shirt and your pre-washed bottles Reduce unhealthy food Try healthy food, it's good! Unit 8. Why is it famous? Pupils Book, page 128. Activity 1. Work with a partner. Look at the map and the pictures of the places. Match the places to the names in the box. Then listen to check. 1. St Basil's Cathedral is located in Russia. 2. The city of Petra is located in Jordan. 3. The Forbidden City is located in Beijing, China. 4. Machu Picchu is located in Peru in South America. 5. The Sydney Opera House is located in Australia. 6. Stonehenge is located in the United Kingdom. Pupils Book, page 129. Activity 4. Look at the photos and read the information about each. Then listen and complete. 1. 
Big Ben, the Elizabeth Tower. Big Ben, or the Elizabeth Tower, is located in London, UK. It was completed in 1859. 2. Taj Mahal The Taj Mahal is located in Agra, India. It was built between the years 1632 and 1654. 3. Temple of Borobudur The Temple of Borobudur is located in central Java in Indonesia. It was built in the 8th and 9th centuries. 4. Great Sphinx of Giza The Great Sphinx of Giza is located in Giza, Egypt. It was probably built between 2558 and 2532 BC. 5. Statue of Liberty The Statue of Liberty is located in New York City Harbour in the United States. It was dedicated in 1886. 6. Pyramid of Kukulkan, El Castillo, at Chichen Itza. The Pyramid of Kukulkan, or El Castillo, at Chichen Itza, is located on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It was built around 900 AD. Pupils Book, page 129. Activity 5. Look at 4. Listen and match the descriptions to the places. Note down any new information you learn. A. This monument, which has got the body of a lion and the head of a human, is located next to the Great Pyramids of Egypt. No one is exactly sure who built it or why it was built. B. This name is often used to refer to three things. The great clock at Westminster, the bell and the tower. It's actually the name of the bell that hangs inside the famous clock tower. In 2012, the tower was renamed the Elizabeth Tower to recognise Queen Elizabeth's 60 years of dedication to her country. C. This temple, which has got 504 statues of Buddha, is considered to be the largest Buddhist temple in the world. Some scholars say that the temple is actually a huge textbook of Buddhism. D. A gift from France to the United States, this structure was designed by the same person who built the Eiffel Tower. It symbolizes a new beginning for many immigrants to the USA in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. E. This is a famous temple that was built by the ancient Maya. It was constructed in a special way to reflect the 365 days of the year, the same number on the ancient Maya calendar. F. This mausoleum was built by Emperor Shah Jahan to remember and honour his wife, Mumtaz Muhal, who died during childbirth. The name of this mausoleum means Crown Palace. Made of white marble, the inside of this structure is decorated with 28 different kinds of gemstones. Activity Book, page 107. Activity 3. Listen and label the pictures with the words in the box. 1. This ancient pyramid was built by the Maya to honour their snake god, Kukul Khan. The pyramid of Kukul Khan has got 365 steps, one step for each day in the Mayan calendar. 2. 
This famous Buddhist temple is one of the largest Buddhist temples in the world. The temple of Borobudur is sometimes listed as one of the seven wonders of the world. 3. This statue is known throughout the world as a symbol of hope and new beginnings. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from the French to the USA. This famous statue stands on Liberty Island in the harbour of New York. But did you know that there are two other Statues of Liberty? An exact copy of the statue was offered by Americans living in Paris to the French in 1889. It's on the Allée des Sagnes in Paris. The third and original model of the Statue of Liberty is in the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris. 4. A mausoleum is a building that holds the tombs of several people who have died. It's their burial place and a place to honour the dead. Probably the most famous and beautiful mausoleum in the world is the Taj Mahal. 5. The clock tower of the Palace of Westminster in London is often called Big Ben. The tower was built between 1843 and 1858 to hold the world's largest clock at that time. In 2012, the tower was officially renamed the Elizabeth Tower in honour of Queen Elizabeth II. 6. All countries have got monuments to honour important events and the people who took part in those events. In downtown Mexico City, a famous monument has got a golden angel on the very top, representing victory, triumph and freedom. This monument to independence is called El Angel de la Independencia. Pupils' Book, pages 130 and 131. Activity 7. Listen and read. What is another name for Easter Island? The Mysteries of Easter Island. For hundreds of years, Easter Island has been a place shrouded in mystery. Have the mysteries of this faraway island finally been solved? Full of mysteries, Easter Island is a small island that sits in the Pacific Ocean, about 3,500 kilometres to the west of Chile, South America. It is a volcanic island that may once have had a population of 7,000 to 17,000 people. Today, there are only 4,000 people who live on the island. Easter Island, known as Rapa Nui to the original settlers, was discovered by Dutch explorers on Easter Day in 1722. Most people know Easter Island today because of the giant statues there, called Moai. For a long time, no one was sure about where the people of Rapa Nui were from. Thanks to DNA testing of old bones, we now know that the original people of Rapa Nui were from Polynesia. For many years, the statues were also the subject of mystery. The faces of the statues looked expressionless. Many scientists thought the statues represented dead ancestors. In 1979, scientist Sergio Rapu Haoa discovered that long ago the statues had eyes that were made of coral. Since his discovery, many of the eyes of the Moai have been restored. With eyes, the statues' faces look very different. They look like proud, strong leaders who watch over Rapa Nui. Probably the biggest mystery about the statues today is still this. How were these statues, most of which are over four metres tall and weigh more than 12 tonnes, moved from the quarry where they were carved out of volcanic rock to various locations around the island. Some scientists believe the Rapa Nui people used trees to move the statues. They think the tree trunks were used as rollers or sleds to pull the statues across the island. 
Other scientists, however, believe the statues were walked across the island. They think ropes were used to rock the statues from side to side, moving them forward a little each time they were rocked. And some people even believe that the statues were moved by aliens with sophisticated technology who helped the Rapa Nui people put the statues in new locations. Scientists have discovered a lot about this ancient culture over just the last 50 years. Maybe someday they will solve all of its mysteries. Activity Book, page 108. Activity 5. Listen and read. Then answer the questions. The Forbidden City In the middle of Beijing, China, is the magnificent Forbidden City. Although now a museum and officially renamed the Palace Museum, or Gu Gong in Chinese, the Forbidden City was built in the early 1400s by Emperor Yang Luo as his imperial home. With 90 palaces and over 900 buildings, the Forbidden City was home to 24 Chinese emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasty for almost 500 years. The Forbidden City is protected by a moat and a wall that is almost 8 metres high. There is an inner court with buildings and rooms for the emperor and his family, and an outer court with halls and gardens, where the emperor did his work and entertained guests. Only people invited by the emperor were allowed into the palace. All others were forbidden to enter. In front of the main gate, there is a pair of bronze lions. The male lion is holding a globe, symbolising the power of the emperor. The female lion has got a cub, she symbolises the health and happiness of the emperor's family. The colours yellow and red appear everywhere. Roofs of the buildings and bricks of the floor are yellow. Yellow symbolised the royal family and its supreme importance to the world. Doors, windows, pillars and walls were often red. Red symbolised happiness and celebration. Today, people come from all over the world to see the thousands of items in the Palace Museum. Paintings, ceramics, jade pieces, clocks, jewellery and sculptures all give us a glimpse of history. In 1987, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation, UNESCO, included the Forbidden City on its World Heritage List for its incredible architectural beauty and wealth of cultural artefacts. Pupils Book, page 132. Activity 9. Listen and read. What places can Juan and his family visit without going very far? Do you know what Mum told me? We don't appreciate things that are close to us, right here in Taos. She's right. This town's got a lot of history. Remember the family who was visiting from London last summer? I do. They were really excited about seeing the old churches here. Yeah, and we had never been to any that were on their list. They were really surprised, weren't they? Yeah, but thanks to that family, we finally got to see the inside of the Church of San Francisco de Assis. The one that was rebuilt? That was cool. You know, Dad, maybe now we should visit more of the famous places that are around us. How about the Tao Ski Valley? It's known all over the world. I knew you had a reason for bringing this up. You want to go on a ski trip. Pupils Book, page 132. Activity 11. Listen and match. Then complete the sentences with the correct form of a verb from the box. 1. Cool magazine? It's my mum's travel magazine. This issue is about famous tourist attractions. Look, 
Here's one of the most photographed structures in the world. What is it? It looks like a huge sail that's just sitting on the water, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's not a sail. It's a hotel in Dubai, the Burj Al Arab Hotel. And you're right. It says here that the design was inspired by the sails of an Arabian trading ship. Nice. Was it built on an island? Yep. An island was created just for the hotel. Wow. I bet it took longer to construct the island than the hotel, don't you? Yeah. It says that it took three years to reclaim the land from the sea to make the island, and it took less time than that to actually build the hotel. See, I was right, wasn't I? Yep. And the hotel itself cost something like four hundred and seventy-five million euros to build. Wow, I'd love to go there. Two. Have you heard of something called a bucket list? It's a wish list of things that people want to do before they die, isn't it? I think so. I heard my mum and her friend, the one who was just here, talking about it. Really? She did look quite old, I suppose. Old people like to talk about that kind of thing. Hey, my mum isn't old. Um, I've got an idea. Let's make our own bucket lists. But we're only twelve. I know, but it'll be fun. Number one on my list would be to see the pyramids in Mexico. The pyramids are in Egypt. There are pyramids in Egypt, but the ones I want to see were built in Mexico. There are pyramids in Mexico. Where in Mexico? Let me get my history book. Here are some pictures. See, it says that these photographs of the pyramids were taken at Chichen Itza, and some other sites in Mexico. So. What's on your bucket list? Hmm. Let me think. Three. What do you think is the most generous thing a man can do for the woman that he loves? I don't know. Buy her a diamond ring, a big house. I give up. What? In social science today, we learnt that the Taj Mahal in India was built by an emperor in honour of his wife. Who died in childbirth? She was buried there. Really? I didn't know that. I've seen pictures of it. It's so beautiful. I think it's made of marble, isn't it? Yes, and the marble is decorated with flowers and beautiful jewels. Inside is the tomb where the emperor's wife was buried. Wow! It took more than twenty-two thousand people, more than twenty years to build. And now it's one of the most famous places in the world. To me, it's the best and most lasting tribute a man could give to the woman that he loved. That's a great love story. I don't know anyone who could top that. Four. Hey, Eric, you're from Australia, right? Yeah, I was born in Sydney, Tanya. Why? That's perfect. What do you know about the Sydney Opera House? I've got to prepare a presentation about it for my art project. Oh yeah, I had to do one too. If it's for your art project, it'd be interesting to talk about its design. Did you know that the Opera House is known around the world for its design? Oh yeah, that makes sense. I've seen some pictures of it. It's stunning, isn't it? Do you know who designed it? Yeah, it's a work of art. Actually. I don't know who designed it, but I do know where the person was from. A design contest was held some time in the 1950s, and the person who won was from Denmark. Wow, the Sydney Opera House was designed by someone from Denmark. Now that is interesting. Yep. You know, it looks like a big boat, doesn't it? Yeah, I've heard other people say the same thing. It's brilliant. Thanks. I think you've just done my homework for me. Activity book page one hundred and nine. Activity six. Listen and read. Then answer the question. Hi, Eric. You're from Australia, aren't you? Yes. I was born in Sydney. Why? Well, I've got to give a presentation in my art class. 
What do you know about the Sydney Opera House? Quite a lot, actually. Did you know that the Opera House is known for its design? Hmm, that makes sense. I've seen pictures and it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a work of art. I don't know who designed it, but I do know where the person was from. A design contest was held sometime in the 1950s, and the person who won was from Denmark. Really? You know, it looks like a big boat, doesn't it? Yeah, I've heard other people say the same thing. It's amazing. Thanks, Eric. You've given me a good start. Activity book, page 109. Activity 8. Complete the dialogues with the expressions in seven. Then listen and check. One. My family is going to the city of Cambridge this weekend. Really? I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. It's known for its architecture and its university, of course. You should go. Two. How was your holiday in Paris? Great. We saw the Eiffel Tower. It's a phenomenal work of art. 3. I'm doing research on Machu Picchu since we're going there on our next holiday. That makes sense. Pupils book, page 134. Activity 15. Listen and read. Which archaeologist discovered the tomb of King Tutankhamun? Accidental Discoveries Finding things from the past is exciting. Archaeologists spend years studying ancient texts and history books in order to discover ancient places. Tombs, palaces, important treasures, Sometimes whole cities are hidden underground, under layers of earth and rock. Sometimes they're found after careful research and digging, but sometimes they're discovered by accident. Here are two truly amazing accidental discoveries. In 1978, a new subway system for Mexico City was being constructed near the National Cathedral. As the workers were digging, they discovered a huge carved stone. The stone was over three meters round and about 30 centimeters thick. It weighed just over eight and a half tons. Workers had archaeologists brought in. They immediately confirmed that the stone was a giant carving of the Aztec moon goddess. The archaeologists quickly realized that this was an important discovery. These were the remains of an Aztec temple from the ancient city of Tenochtitlan. Soon, a pyramid was uncovered, which scientists dated to 1325 AD. Built on top of the original pyramid, there were another six pyramids. In total, over 7,000 different artefacts were also found at the site. Before this surprise discovery, archaeologists believed that Spanish people had destroyed the temple to build the cathedral. Today, if you visit the Zocalo, which is in the heart of Mexico City, you can see the artefacts in the Templo Mayo Museum nearby. The discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt might be the most famous accidental discovery of its kind. The valley is home to more than 60 tombs in which ancient pharaohs and kings are buried. In 1922, most archaeologists had given up looking for tombs there because they were convinced that everything had already been discovered. But one archaeologist, Howard Carter, continued searching. Carter decided to excavate under the remains of some abandoned huts from an old archaeological dig. He was not disappointed. Working with some friends of his, he discovered the entrance to the tomb of King Tutankhamun. 
the tomb, containing the mummified body of the pharaoh, a gold coffin, and more than 2,000 magnificent treasures, is the most well-preserved ancient tomb that has ever been found. The tomb survived 3,000 years, even though robbers and floods destroyed many of the other tombs in the region. The artifacts from the tomb that once belonged to King Tutankhamun can now be seen in the Cairo Museum in Egypt. Activity Book, page 112. Activity 16. Listen and read. Where was the farmer who lost his hammer? Accidental Discoveries Do you ever wonder what the world around you looked like hundreds or even thousands of years ago? What do you know about the people that used to live where you live now? Although we can learn about history from visiting museums, reading books and watching films, we can uncover much of the past from discovering buried artefacts and even treasure in the ground beneath us. There were probably children just like you who played in the places that you play in today. Below your feet there could be artefacts or even treasures from those times, and you could discover them, even by accident. Not all discoveries are made by archaeologists who may spend years researching ancient places. Some discoveries are made accidentally by people just like you. One important accidental discovery occurred in 1992 in England. A farmer was working in the fields when he lost his hammer. He asked a neighbour to help him find it. His neighbour had a metal detector. The first thing the metal detector found was a silver spoon. Then it found some jewellery and gold coins. The surprised farmers asked for the help of archaeologists. When the archaeologists excavated, they were shocked to discover a large box with over 14,000 Roman gold and silver coins inside. They believed that the treasure came from the 4th and 5th centuries AD. The archaeologists found other artefacts as well, including the farmer's hammer. The artefacts were sold to museums, and the farmers received £2.5 million as payment. Now, wasn't this an amazing accidental discovery? In another accidental discovery, Workers in Wyoming, in the United States, were digging up land to make a football field. They discovered artefacts from an ancient village that existed as long ago as the 1st century AD. The artefacts included objects used in people's homes and in the fields, as well as coins and other treasures. Do you think the past is just waiting for you to uncover it? It may be. So the next time you walk out of your door, look carefully at the world around you. You never know what you might find. Pupils Book, page 136, Activity 19. Listen and read. What's the problem with Ollie's bike? Is he going to mend it himself? What happened to your bike? Why's the wheel all bent? I left it on a street corner last night, and a car must have hit it. That's really annoying. People shouldn't drive so fast. I know. Now I need to get it repaired. You need to have the wheel replaced. How much do you think that will be? Have you ever had that done? Yes. I had a wheel replaced on my bike last year, and it cost 180 euros. That's really expensive. Do you think I could mend it myself? I suppose so, but it could be quite tricky. You're right. I'll get it fixed at the bike shop. Pupils Book, pages 138 and 139. Activity 29. 
Listen and read. Then answer the questions. The new seven world wonders. What exactly are the seven wonders of the world? Who created the list and when? The list has existed since antiquity. It's a list of the most amazing natural and man-made structures on Earth. The list was first compiled by the historian Herodotus in the 5th century BC. His list was created using sites which were popular with Hellenic sightseers. The original list, therefore, included sites from the Mediterranean only. The number seven was chosen because the Greeks believed seven was a perfect number. Only one of the original ancient wonders still exists today, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Over the years, there have been a number of different lists, but in 2001, a Swiss company decided to have a new list made with seven wonders of the modern world. They chose 21 finalists. Of course, the Great Pyramid of Giza was added to the list and became the honorary eighth wonder. These are the places that received the final vote. 1. Petra Possibly built as early as the 6th century BC, this was the capital of an ancient empire. The structures of this city in Jordan, Western Asia, were carved into rock and sandstone. 2. Taj Mahal When Mumtaz Mahal, the wife of Emperor Shah Jahan, died, the Indian emperor had this temple built, between 1632 and 1654. 3. Great Wall of China Built between the 5th century BC and the 16th century AD, this wall was built more than 2,000 years ago to keep enemies out. 4. Kukul Khan Pyramid at Chichen Itza Built sometime between the 11th and 13th centuries AD, Chichen Itza is an archaeological site on the Yucatan Peninsula. Kukul Khan, a 30-meter-high pyramid and temple, is its most famous landmark. 5. Machu Picchu Built in the early 15th century AD, this ancient Incan city is 2,430 meters above sea level and consists of 150 buildings. Its most famous structure, the Temple of the Sun, is made of solid rock. 6. Statue of Christ the Redeemer Built between 1922 and 1931 Standing 38 meters tall at the top of a mountain is a statue of Christ with his arms outstretched. The statue looks out over the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. 7. Roman Colosseum Built between 72 and 80 AD During the Roman Empire, the Colosseum was used for battles between gladiators and for other forms of entertainment. Which other place would get your vote as the eighth wonder? Activity book, page 116. Activity 24. Read and complete with the words in the box. Then listen and check. The New Seven Wonders of the World do you know what the seven wonders of the world are? Over the years, there have been several different lists, and many people around the world think they know what the wonders are, but they aren't always correct. Although there are many amazing natural and man-made structures in our world, not all of them are one of the seven wonders. 
Let's read more about how today's list was compiled. Over 2,000 years ago, in ancient Greece, an engineer, Phylon of Byzantium, created a list of the seven ancient wonders of the world. Today, only one of those wonders of antiquity still exists, the Pyramids of Egypt. In 1999, Bernard Weber, a Swiss adventurer, decided to create a new list of world wonders. He began the new Seven Wonders Foundation. This time, he wanted people from all around the world to choose the seven new wonders that exist today. He asked people to send in their votes for the new wonders. People voted by texting, voting online on the website, or calling in their votes. By 2007, more than 100 million people had voted. Who were these voters? Most of the voters were not adults. Bernard Weber is proud of the fact that they were mostly children and young people. Weber and a group of people reviewed all the votes. They chose the new Seven Wonders based on these criteria. The places should each have a unique beauty. The places should come from all over the world and represent people from all over the world. The places should be from different environments, such as deserts and rainforests. The places should be important to people from different cultures. The places should be located on different continents. The final list of seven new wonders was decided. They are described on page 139 of your pupil's book. Weber was delighted by the enthusiasm and love that people showed for their cultures and other cultures. This enthusiasm and love, he believes, creates a feeling of hope for the future. Pupils Book, page 142. Activity 36. Listen, read and repeat. 1. A bull. 2. Full. 3. Lee. Pupils Book, page 142. Activity 37. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. K. A. M. F. O. T. A bull. Comfortable. 2. P. E. S. Full. Peaceful. Three. D. E. P. Li. Deeply. Four. W. O. Sh. Able. Washable. Five. B. U. T. I. Full. Beautiful. Six. S. U. O. Li. Slowly. Pupils Book, page 142. Activity 38. Listen and chant. I feel so comfortable on my soft pillow. I breathe deeply, I breathe slowly, and I have a peaceful sleep.